Hello, my name is Tony Miller, and this is the sixth lesson, I believe, in a series of social distancing Bible review that I'm sharing with you, those who subscribe to my channel, and those who don't as well, just to give us a break in our day in order to learn a little bit about God's Word, I learn a little bit about this journey that Jesus took along the way to the cross and on this way to this Resurrection Sunday, Easter. This is, uh, my name is Tony Miller. I share each week my Sunday School lesson. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. Let's move on to this social distancing Bible review. Amen. So again, this is my social distancing Bible review and it is the story uh, uh, on Tuesday where Jesus will leave uh, Bethany and head back to Jerusalem and headed to the Mount of Olives. This is Tuesday, the events that are leading up to Easter Resurrection Sunday. Let's move on. So how did we get here? So I started the, these lessons and originally I was did some trivia and then this week my goal is that we're going to do a lesson for the days that lead us up into this Resurrection Day. And yesterday we did uh, Monday and I show you a bit of Monday and then we're moving to Tuesday uh, just to keep us on path of this journey that Jesus takes to the cross. Amen. Next. So Monday. And when Jesus arrived from Bethany to at the temple, temple, he found the courts full of corrupt money changers. And he began to overturning their tables and clearing the temple and saying that the scriptures declare that the temple will be a house of prayer. But you've turned into a den of thieves. And, and they find it in Luke 19 and 46. And Jesus was quite upset. And, 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 and there the the uh, the people were were exchanging money as a uh, Passover was occurring, was coming approaching, and and they they changed money as everybody from different regions came in, and people who bought uh, doves and 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 other items for sacrifice that they're all needed to exchange, and 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 big commerce was going on inside the temple. And uh, inside the temple courts, and Jesus was unhappy about the ev events that were transpiring, and rightfully so, he kicked them all out. Let's move on. Amen. So and then it was late in the day on Monday, and Jesus takes a look back in the temple to make sure everything was okay, that they didn't come back, and then he leaves the city and heads on to end his day. Next line. And then Jesus and his disciples spend that night, again, Monday night, in Bethany, possibly again at the house of Lazarus. We know the story of Lazarus because Lazarus was the the, um, the man that Jesus raised from the dead and his sister Mary and Martha. Uh, and no, note also that if, uh, you, repetition in my lessons is commonplace. I, I, every lesson I know stands by itself and someone may just take one lesson out of context without having the prior um, context. So I, I, if I repeat things, uh, I do that in purpose to give you the totality of the essence of this message. Amen. Let's move on. So Monday ends for Jesus and his disciples. Amen. So now it's Tuesday. And uh, Jesus again is in Bethany at, at Lazarus' house, house, and he along with the, the disciples. And now Jesus will go to the Mount of Olives. Next day, next slide. So I share with you this map just to get you in perspective of some pieces of this because there's Bethany and then there's the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives, last lesson I share with you, that is a place that's in between there and going to Jerusalem where the temple is and 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 there in, in the Mount of Olives also uh, there's this uh, where Jesus can look over and see the city and that's when we showed I shared with you before he wept as he looked over the Mount of Olives is frequently mentioned in the New Testament as a part of the route 
from Jerusalem to Bethany and the place where Jesus stood where when he wept over Jerusalem that's what I just shared so it gives you some perspective and also that fig tree that fig tree was on that journey heading to to um, to the Mount of Olives and again this distance is only about two or two and a half mile journey amen just give you some perspective of what we're talking about in this journey amen Next. so on Monday I share with you that uh, that when they left again leaving Lazarus house and heading to Bethany that Jesus saw this fig tree and I said that Jesus was on his way back to the city and he was hungry and seeing the tree by the road he went up and found and not he found uh, he went up to it and, and found nothing on it except leaves and then he said to you may never bear fruit again so Jesus cursed it he cursed his tree along the way on Monday heading into Jerusalem next month and I share with you that whole thing what happened on Monday because on Tuesday morning Jesus and the disciples were now leaving Bethany again and and heading back into Jerusalem and the disciples were returning to Jerusalem they passed that with a tree where Jesus had cursed on their way and Jesus spoke to his, compa his companions these disciples about this whole fig tree and the disciples were amazed when they saw it and they asked how did the fig tree wither so quickly and Jesus told them so I tell you the truth if you have faith and don't doubt you can do things like this and much more you can even say to this mountain you may be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen if you pray for anything and if you have faith you will receive it this was a teaching moment for Jesus and that's the reason he he uh, he cursed the tree because now as they move and they travel on their journey they next notice the next day and Jesus teaches them an important message about faith next one that your faith but our faith that if we have and we believe in our heart we believe that the scripture we believe what Jesus says and we have faith that there is no obstacle that we can that can impede our progress it's just that doubt that we have that that is the only obstacle that can block our and impede our process our progress and 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 that's what that's important that we take and internalize this message that Jesus says about this this fig tree and, and, and again that anything we ask with a believing heart believing in God says we can have the desires of our heart that's the important message that Jesus is trying to convey to the people and to us as well Amen. Next. so long Jesus gave this Olivet Discourse they were heading to the Mount of Olives and that's where he was heading there and then and then and, and there when he got arrived in the Mount of Olives that Jesus gave this Olivet, Olivet Discourse now the Olivet Discord is an elaborate prophecy about the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the age and it's where we get our prophecy and what we get and we talk about the events like are happening right now and he speaks as uh, unusual in parables using symbolic languages about the end of times including his second coming and the final judgment and here in that Olivet Discourse he talk about that temple being destroyed in 70 AD and again when I share with you before that when he, he wept over the city knowing the events are going to happen in 70 AD and he, and he talks about the end of the age is going to happen where wars and rumors of wars and famine and pestilence and earthquakes and all these things that are going to happen in false Christ and and the falling away and then a breaking of covenants and the knowledge increase and and then there's going to be a rapture and then there will become a second coming and all the events if you go back to the social distancing lesson I taught on the end times it has a lot of these same events that are that all come from this Olivet Discourse well, now Jesus is teaching these disciples many lessons wanting to make sure they get the essence of all that will happen in the future and, and here he provides them with this 
again with the, the tribulation and the great tribulation and, and, the, and about the end of times and the millennial kingdom and all these things that are going to happen and Jesus was thought as important that that is in disciples and us as well to understand the events that will take place in our history. Amen. Next slide. So Jesus was teaching diligently, knowing that he's ultimately going to go to the cross soon. And, and we find in Matthew 21 through 26, many of the lessons that Jesus taught. Taught about that figure, that withered tree that I just shared with you, and the parable of the two sons, and the parable of the wine press, and the parable of the great supper. And then uh, along this journey, he was tested by these Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then they bring the big guns, the lawyers, and and then and the scribes and the Pharisees, and he talked about the ten virgins and the talents and the sheep and the goats. And, and along this way, Jesus was teaching many lessons, knowing that ultimately he will go to the cross soon. Amen. And then you find in Luke 11 and 21 that Jesus finally arrives again in his journey heading from Bethany on to the park, stopping at the Mount of Olives where he, he, he preaches, he teaches this lesson about the end times. And now they arrive in Jerusalem and while uh, Jesus was walking into the temple courts. The chief priests and the, the teachers of the law and the elders came to him and, and they, they wanted to know by what authority are you doing these things? They asked. And who gave you the authority to do this? <clears throat> and Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Again, he's speaking to those, uh, those priests and teachers and elders. And he says, answer me this I, and, and I will tell you. By what authority am I doing these things? That they wanted to know who gave you the authority to do these things. And Jesus says, I want to ask you a question as well. And he says that uh, John's baptism was from heaven or of human origin? Tell me. Again, Jesus often gives the response to the question of those religious authorities with another question. He does the same thing here. And they discussed it among themselves and said, if, if we say from heaven, he will say, why don't you believe him? But if they say of human origin, they fear that the people for, for everyone held that John was a prophet, that they would, they answered Jesus, we don't know. Because they're worried about that if they say it one way, they might get caught. And they say if they're this way, that they'll get caught by the people. So Jesus tells them and responds to them. And again, as the, all of this teaching that he's done is, is um, over and over over this period of time. And he says, Jesus says, neither will I tell you by what authority am I doing these things. And you can't tell me what authority that, that, that John the Baptist did his things. And don't ask me about what authority. Obviously, the answer, rhetorical answers by Almighty God. Amen. And I share with you in the last lessons that, that Jesus came with power and authority, only given by our God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, the creator of the universe. Amen. Next. And then Jesus and his disciples uh, will head back to Bethany and will spend another night in Bethany, possibly again at Lazarus' house. Next slide. And then the Bible indicates that <clears throat> now this is the end of Tuesday. But there's another significant event that happens also on Tuesday, more likely a Tuesday night. And it was also that day or that night when G Judas Iscariot negotiated with those Sanhedrin, those rabbinical leaders. Because again, that Jesus had just come in and he had turned over the money table changers and they were getting a cut. Jesus had come on and he's, he's been teaching these, these lessons and teaching these messages. And again, I told you before that, in, that they were upset already and they knew they wanted to kill him and they needed to have somebody on their side in order to get them into that. They, they had no power to do it themselves, so they had to do it through the Roman authority. So they had to come up with a plan and, and they plotted out this plan and they, they negotiated with uh, Judas Iscariot negotiated with those Sanhedrin in the rabbinical, in the rabbinical courts of the ancient Israel. 
to betray Jesus, to betray Jesus. They found someone who would help them to get what they wanted to get done. And Jesus' parents was a pawn in their scheme to get rid of Jesus. Next one. So, that ends Tuesday. So here's the thing. On Wednesday, there is no record in the gospel to determine what actually happened on Wednesday. So tomorrow, I don't necessarily have another lesson like this, but I'm going to share my a, a synopsis of my normal Sunday school lesson tomorrow. But much of the activity must have occurred. Some things must have occurred on this Wednesday because in the coming days, Jesus will prepare for the Last Supper and Judas and, and the Sanhedrin will prepare for the rest of Jesus. And Jesus and his disciples will remain in Bethany throughout Wednesday. That's no doubt. And then continue to stay the night there on Wednesday and then ultimately on Thursday that they will move on and I'll move on. Continuation of this narrative that I'm laying out for you as Jesus makes his journey to the cross to become Redeemer the sin sacrifice for all mankind, the, the Redeemer, the one whose blood will be shared as a sacrificial lamb for all men. Jesus will become sin sacrifice for all mankind. Our Redeemer. Amen. Next slide. So that is our social distancing Bible review for Tuesday. Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives and these events that are leading up to Easter. This is my YouTube channel. I ask you if you would so be so kind as to hit the subscribe button and the bell and you get these my lessons automatically. Like my lessons, leave me comments, share my lessons, share my lessons. They all these things encourage me and uh, continue to share the word of God with you. And as you know, people that are that are, are sequestered, people who are at home, people are, are doing this social distancing and, and they're being obedient to the uh, political leaders and those who are in the medical profession so that the, the spread of the virus doesn't continue. You can always take my lessons and share it with others so that they would also have this Bible review and get a little bit of God in them while they're taking a pause from their normal activities. Thanks so much for your time. God bless.